President Muhammad Buhari is harping on why infrastructure occupies a pride of place in his development agenda. The president was speaking during an audience with President Marcelo Sousa of Portugal on the sideline of the 74th United Nations General Assembly, where he tasked his uh, counterpart on investments and security. President Buhari also met with the former Prime Minister, Kevin Drode of Australia, where the leaders spoke on water and sanitation, amongst other issues. Well, congratulations on survival. <laughs> the federal government says that it is making efforts to improve food security with special emphasis on fishing as it commissions the dis and distributes basic fishing equipment to women across the Niger Delta region through the Office of the Presidential Amnesty Programme. The exercise is geared towards empowering women who are actively engaged in fishing and fishing activities, improving their income as well as increasing food security. Fishing is a significant source of livelihood for many, especially those living in the coastal communities in the Niger Delta region. In many cases, women have been reported to play vital roles in this practice, ranging from fishing to processing and marketing, making them relevant in the food production chain. Displayed here are boats, canoes, and other fishing tools at Otokutu, a community in Delta State where the presidential amnesty program seeks to improve the business of fishing. A representative of the special advisor to the president on Nigel Delta Amnesty speaks on the objective of the exercise. They used to use these local uh, paddle canoes, you know, but here you have, I mean, a bit of modern equipment. You have uh, uh, the engine boats, a bigger boat, you have uh, life jackets, you have fire extinguishers and all that. So you see that they were more comfortable in uh, implying their trade and that will enhance their productivity. This program goes direct to the, the village women who do fishing in the coastal region of the Ninja Delta. And this is the first of its kind that this kind of program is going direct to the women on ground. The fishing tools are commissioned and distributed to the women as beneficiaries harp on the positive effect. They don't empower me. I they take and they go river, they go find fish, so that my brothers and sisters then say go they see and they buy, they empower the ninja data. Today I'm surprised that they do this for me because this fish, I will keep fish, I will use the engine to go river and keep fish and sell, train my children. The role of women in fishing in these areas are very crucial in improving the nation's economy. A deeper concentration in this direction will foster growth and development, especially in rural areas. Time now for business news on the News at 10 with Kayode Okekiolu. Well, thank you, Kimba, and welcome to Business News. The House of Representatives is set to investigate the 5.4 trillion naira debt portfolio of the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON, and the alleged unwillingness of some of the debtors to pay. The House reached this decision after the adoption of a motion sponsored by Representative Cornelius Naji, who was worried over the huge debt owed AMCON. The House further mandated its Committee on Banking and Currency to evaluate the status identify the proprietors of the debts, and decide if there is a need to amend the AMCON Act. And moving on to other stories, the Debt Management Office says it raised 146.6 billion naira for the 150 billion naira offered for three instruments in the September bond auction. The DMO in a statement says the amount raised at the auction was carried out through competitive and non-competitive bids. As with the previous auctions, investors' sentiments remained strong for the longer-rated bonds, with allotments made to successful bidders at 14.39% for the five-year paper, 
14.43% for the 10-year and 14.64% for the 30-year bonds. The debt office explains that it received 207.5 billion naira in subscriptions for the three instruments that were offered. Out of the country, Bulgarian economist Kristalina Georgieva has been confirmed as the manager director of the International Monetary Fund, becoming the first person from an emerging economy to head the global lender. The 66-year-old, who was previously the chief executive of the World Bank, was the only nominee for the job and becomes the second woman to lead the 189-member institution. She is to take her position as the head of the IMF on October the 1st, replacing Christine Lagarde, who is leaving to become the head of the European Central Bank. South Africa recorded increased foreign direct investment inflows in the second quarter, and this is compared to the first quarter as domestic firms received debt and equity funding from foreign parent companies. Latest data from the Reserve Bank Quarterly Bulletin shows that the country registered portfolio investment inflows of 10 billion rand between April and June from inflows of 29.2 billion rand reported same period last year. The SARB further reports that Africa's most industrialized economy had FDI inflows of 26.3 billion rand or $1.76 billion in the second quarter from inflows of 11.7 billion rand in the first three months of the year. Meanwhile, forecast indicates that investor confidence in South Africa remains fragile, while the economic growth outlook is clouded by a lack of clarity and progress on reforms. And back here in Nigeria, more profit taking on the shares of Ennis's two most capitalized so stocks sustains downbeat performance on the all share index. And this is despite moderate gains from three other key sectors of the market. Edid Yongiwang has the details of midweek trading activities. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. It's a third straight day of losses for the equities market as the month of September gradually winds down. This time, no thanks to market heavyweights Dangote Cement and MTN Nigeria, which shed 1.30 and 0.72% each. As a result, the All Share Index fell 0.25%, nearing the 26,000 lower level, while equities cap slips further to 13.281 trillion naira. In sectoral performance, only the industrial goods counter was negative today, down 0.55%, while three others ended positive. Now, Wednesday's session saw a higher turnover of shares traded at 462.31 million, valued at 7.92 billion naira, and exchanged in almost 3,000 deals. Shares of Access, Custodian, and Nigerian breweries were the most traded for the day. Continental Insurance is the highest gainer of 9.55%, while Nigeria Police Microfinance Bank lost the most by 9.85%. 9.84%. That's a summary of midweek trading at the Nigerian equities market. I'm Edidi Ongiwang. Thank you, Did Young. Outside the country, despite political uncertainty in the United States, stocks on Wall Street ended Wednesday's trading session over an hour ago in the green. And that's after President Donald Trump hints that trade deal with China could arrive sooner than expected. Meanwhile, here's how other global markets close the day. Thank you for watching Business News Tonight. I am Kayode Okikolu. It's back to you, Gimba. You first. First bank. Thank you, Kayode. The drive to... To save renewable energy from degradation has prompted the European Union to commit 158 million euros to tackle deforestation and pollution. With the support of the Kano State Government, the EU has taken the renewable energy campaign to the Bayero University Kano to engage the youth on how to embrace technology that promotes renewable energy.
But it's not too late to act. It's not too late to come together. It's not too late to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Let's not forget that green is not just a color, but a lifestyle. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Poetic words laced with seriousness. Thank you so much. That's the feeling at the Bayero University, Kano, where the talk on renewable energy is being promoted, one which everyone here is passionate about. The major advocate at this event is the European Union, calling for the use of renewable energy as a tool to fight deforestation and pollution. Students at the university are excited and show it through displays of energy-saving inventions. The ambassador of the European Union is optimistic that the youth have a vital role to play and to express its readiness to support. The union has pledged 158 million euros to make it happen. If we are to have a, a transformational response, a solid response to the challenges of ad the adverse effects of climate change, we need the youth to engage. So this is what the discussion of today has been all about. Of course, stressing at the same time the commitment, the very strong commitment of the European Union to partner with Nigeria to continue supporting those uh, provisions of renewable energy to make sure that we also engage on climate change issues. Collaborating with the European Union is Bluebird Communications Limited. The company's managing director sees the youth as being the torch bearers for the future of the environment. See, we in the interest of the youth because they should say they should be vanguard of this campaign because at the end of the day, the future belongs to the youth. Applauding the initiative, the head of service to the Kano State Government pledges full support. Government is with you, and government appreciates the fact you have chosen Kano uh, to even uh, 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 commission a borehole which is based on the concept of renewable energy. The knowledge of how serious protecting the environment should be is what participants hopefully take away from this event and become ambassadors of saving the planet. Still ahead on the news at 10, world's fastest man in 2019, Christian Coleman, insists he has never used performance-enhancing drugs as he prepares for World Athletics Championship in Doha. That's the sports news. Stay with us.